Okay, we have started recording. Um, officially, I'd like to take a moment and just welcome you to um, our Terrain Navigator Pro training webinar. Uh, this afternoon, our topic is uh, the Polygon tool. And uh, we just thank you for uh, joining us uh, for the Polygon tool. Um, my name is Michelle LeCaire. Um, I'm the sales director and uh, the trainer for Terrain Navigator Pro. Uh, I'd like to welcome you if this is your first uh, training webinar or maybe you've joined us for other ones. Um, we appreciate that. And um, if you want to visit some of our past webinars, we've been doing this for about six months now. Uh, you can always go to our YouTube channel at uh, what I would recommend is go to www.youtube.com. Uh, search for Terrain Navigator Pro and you'll find a wealth of videos, including past uh, webinars. With uh, out further ado, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to share out my screen. So if you bear with me for one second. Uh, we're good to go here and you should be seeing my uh, Terrain Navigator Pro screen. What I've done is I have um, uh, created a project all re ready. And the name of my project is uh, the Polygon Tool a Webinar. And what you'll see uh, is a um, nice uh, track of land uh, that we're going to work with for our polygons this afternoon. Um, one of the things that I do want to mention before getting started is I'm going to set a global preference for polygons. And the way to set this preference or any preference uh, is to go to the file menu, uh, then choose preferences. <laughs> and uh, then go to polygons. And when we set polygon preferences, um, there's a couple of things that I'm interested uh, in setting a, an option for, and that's gonna be for labeling the area so that uh, we know when we draw the um, polygon what the area is gonna be. So we're gonna go ahead, I just wanna show you that there are some other drop down things that you can label the area. You can uh, label it with the name or a GPS name. Uh, you could put some notes in that area. You can have it by area or perimeter. But for this global um, uh, discussion here, we're gonna set it as area. Now as far as our edges, um, we're going to set that, there's uh, a couple of different ways to set it. You can set it on the range, which is going to be what we commonly would refer to as distance. You can do a bearing, uh, for those that are comfortable with that, you can do range and bearing or a grade. I'll demonstrate those a little bit more as we go, but I'm going to set these two global settings and I'm going to go ahead and um, let this uh, close. And so let's talk about polygons. You know, a polygon uh, is a geometric shape that's used to define an area and a perimeter. Uh, polygons are a perfect way for creating boundaries, property designations, tree stands, or the like. So as we're looking at uh, our um, map here, you know, we've got some uh, 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 polygons to kind of jump out at us. For example, Let's say uh, where my cursor is here, we wanted to uh, go ahead and uh, we want to, um, you know, um, take a look at this tree stand and we wanted to know exactly what the area, what the perimeter was. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our polygon tool, we're going to take that off the toolbar. And you'll see that uh, the mouse becomes like a uh, cross. This, when I left click with my mouse, will drop uh, a point. Uh, and what we're gonna do, and what I suggest is when you're working with this, uh, is you follow the outline uh, of, you know, the basic uh, shape that you're working with. So uh, what we can do is you'll notice I'm taking the boundaries of this. And I'm just going to go for a ge uh, generic shape right away, but then I'm going to show you how to refine uh, your, um, you know, you, you want to make sure that it refines. So I'm going to zoom in with my mouse wheel, and you can see I didn't do a very good job here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, take the vertices here, 
uh, and we're going to bring them in. Um, let me go ahead. I'm going to turn my uh, cursor back into a mouse. Uh, and what we'll do here is uh, I do want to edit this uh, polygon. So bear with me for just a second. Let's go back to this polygon. Uh, and um, we want to uh, edit this. And uh, so forth. I apologize. I did get uh, I did get off here. Let's go to um, uh, and I have a quick question for you. So what we want to do is bring this edge in. Okay. So grab the polygon tool. You've got you've got that tool. Yep. Oh, okay. So there we go. Sorry, I just didn't have the right tool selected. My bad. Got distracted there. Okay, so you can see that I am uh, bringing this polygon and I am just adjusting it and fine tuning the polygon. What you'll see is that you can't see how many acres it is in the middle. We set a global preference when we started. Now, what we can do is um, edit this polygon and what we can do is um, change it. And so we can change the fill pattern. Uh, we can put it like a chartreuse. And what we want to do is like change the background to a white. And so for this specific polygon, what you'll see uh, is that uh, it puts the fill in and now we can see the acres and, and so forth. So um, I'm going to back up and I'm going to zoom out. So uh, working with particular tree stands, uh, it's very easy in Terrain Navigator Pro to use the polygon tool uh, to get the acreage and things like that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show us a uh, polygon that we want to compute the area of, but uh, there's parts of it that we don't want to include in that computation. So uh, again, I'm going to go to my polygon tool. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take this land track here. Uh, and what we're going to do is go ahead and let's say we have this as our polygon. Uh, and again, you can refine that as much as we want to. But one of the things I want to do is right click. I want to go to edit the polygon and I want to give this a name. Let's just say, for example, this is uh, John's uh, track of land. So we're going to go ahead and give this a name. I can go ahead and close out of this. And I want to compute the acreage, but I don't want to include these two bodies of water, for example. What you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner is I can add a hole. And what that's going to do is create uh, another um, polygon that's within this polygon. But what you'll see uh, is that um, we are um, not including this body of water in the computation. So I have that. I don't want to include that in my computation. What I can do is add another hole. And I can say, I don't want this body of water either. So again, I can uh, create a polygon out of this. Now we've got two polygons. I'm going to click Finish. And those two are not. Uh, included in the computation. You know, we can do that as much as we wanted. If we don't want to include uh, this section up here, and I'll just make this be uh, the last one, I will say, okay, I don't want to include this track of land up here. So let's go ahead, and what you'll see is we're going to uh, drop how much is computed um, by drawing that hole uh, within uh, TNP. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. And so let's take a look here. Um, I'm going to go to my Layers menu. And I'm going to go to Polygons. And you'll see we have two polygons here. I didn't give my first one a name, but you know we can call this uh, Tree Stand, for example. 
go ahead and close that. Um, let me go back to my layers. Another way to get to layers is to use the shortcut on the tool uh, menu here. Uh, this is where I can turn on and off layers, for example. So I can go to uh, polygons. Let's say I wanted to uh, uh, not show polygons. I can turn that, that layer off. So all polygons will go off. And I can turn them back on. Whoops. I don't think I selected it. Let's see. Whoops, there it is. Okay. Our polygons are back up. One of the things that we do is um, we will go ahead and... Um, where was I? I want to go to layers. I want to go to my polygons now. I want to go... So this is John's. And let's say within John's track of land, uh, we wanted to make some changes. What we would do is edit parts. Okay, what's important about editing the parts, you'll see a new window comes up. So we've got uh, uh, part one is the perimeter, and then we've got holes. So we've got hole one, hole two, and hole three. Uh, what we can do is go ahead and create either a track or a route. Now, I already synchronized my uh, Terrain Navigator Pro project with a mobile project. And so I, uh, one thing about the mobile app is that it does not display polygons. Uh, the mobile app will display for you markers, routes, or tracks. So uh, the difference between a track and a route a route will have waypoints that make up the individual legs, uh, and a route is just one closed, um, you know, one closed area. For the sake of demonstration, and I will demonstrate this both on the uh, mobile app as well as uh, on uh, the web portal. Uh, those are other areas for your Tree Navigator Pro projects, and I'm going to display uh, that. So we're going to create a track. And what we're going to call this track, I'm going to leave it um, the way that it, that it uh, already came in. It says John's track of land, and that's the perimeter. This is going to create a track. I'm going to click OK. And one of the things that you're going to see is that the track uh, turns black, um, as opposed to the polygons, which are in red. Uh, I am going to go ahead and close this. Um, and you can see there's a number of different uh, things here. So we've got the GPS name. If I wanted to lock this into position, I could do that from this menu here. Um, I can hide this particular one. Let's say, yeah, I wanted to hide it from view. You'll see that the track uh, is um, right there. Um, and let's see, uh, you can go from there. Um, from this menu here, if you wanted uh, to go ahead and take uh, an available uh, polygon, you could create a route or a track in this menu as well. So um, in any event, I've turned off the polygon for John's track of land. Um, and we're good to go here. Um, I do have a question here, and, and thank you for that. If you do have any questions, please bring it up in the track, and I'll do my best uh, as we're going through to answer those questions. Gary has a question here. Is there another reason for turning it into a track other than to have it show up on uh, the mobile app? Um, you know, that's going to depend on the, I think, the type of work uh, that you do. Um, some folks, um, you know, might prefer to work with tracks um, as opposed to polygons uh, because it's a closed route. Um, if anybody has any other ideas of, of why you would want to turn it into, um, you know, a, a polygon into a track besides it showing up on the mobile app, uh, feel free to uh, join the discussion in the chat. Um, so we're good to go here. I am going to click close. 
And what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom out uh, maybe just a little bit too much here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, I'm going to create a third polygon um, because I want to show you sometimes typically what can happen with when you're working with the polygon tool uh, and how to rectify that. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, the polygon tool. And um, Neil, thank you for that. Uh, Gary uh, Pinkerton, just to get back to your question, uh, Neil had said that uh, you can export a track to a handheld GPS for display. You can't export a polygon. So um, I guess, Gary, another reason too is if you're going to export it to a GPS. Thank you, Neil, for that. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to take a look at this uh, tree stand here. And I want to show you a couple of things. Let's say that we're working with this uh, particular tree stand. We want to create a polygon. And let's say, uh, you know, we, we, we say, oh, okay, let me see. Uh, I'm going to do my outline here. Perfect. And let's say, uh, you know, you um, get something like this. When you see that the vertices of a polygon have turned red, it means that there's invalid typology, uh, meaning that it's not able to be calculated. It's kind of like uh, divided by zero. So sometimes when you're working with Terrain Navigator Pro, and I know it took me a, a while to kind of to, to discover this, I'd be working with the polygon tool, uh, didn't notice that my vertices had turned to red and didn't even know what that meant. Uh, but what I, understand is that, oops, uh, invalid typology. What we're going to do is go ahead and delete that vertex. And we're going to say yes to that vertex. And what you'll see is all the vertices go back to black. That means that it's able to be calculated. So that is one way. Uh, if you do come across that scenario in Terrain Navigator Pro, um, uh, to uh, just go ahead and delete, delete that vertex. Uh, if you do have that happen. So um, here's our polygon right here. I wanted to demonstrate what can happen uh, if it turns red. Um, we've already created a track for this, but again, I just want to go through some of the uh, things here. When I edit an edge, so what I did is I right clicked and we have the edit edge. Uh, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can, for a specific edge or distance between two points, uh, adjust it. Let's say if you know the bearing or if you know the distance, uh, and you can specify that in feet, kilometers, miles, or yards. So uh, between two different points, um, you can go ahead and do that. Another thing that I would mention from uh, about this is that you can reverse um, the uh, direction. So right now we've got uh, vertex one to vertex two. You can revert, revert that such that the last vertex becomes the first. So you can do that from um, this. Um, bearing measurement, uh, if you know what the quadrant is, you could select that. So, um, you can create new ones here. You can delete vertices from this menu as well, um, and so forth. I do have a question from Charla. Do polygons print, or do they have to be converted uh, to tracks? We can, Charla, um, take a, a section of a map with a polygon, um, and we can go ahead and print that, so there's not any problems with that. Uh, the conversion to tracks uh, is specifically uh, for mobile or GPS. Um, anything that you put on them um, there, um, uh, if you uh, copy, let's say you, you copy a map, you can uh, uh, print the, the uh, polygon. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this. I do want to show off a couple of other things here. We're almost done. Um, bear with me for one second. Um, you'll see the distance from this vertex to this vertex. Uh, it's telling me that it's 805 feet. Well, what if I want to get the entire perimeter? I would right click and what we would do is go to polygon and I would go to information. And what you'll see is we'll get information on this. We'll get the map scale. 
uh, we'll have our polygon name. Here's our area. Now, I have set a global preference for area. I want to see it in both acres and square meters. Uh, you can change uh, your preferences if you want just acres or if you want meters or, you know, another variant that we have available. Um, again, my perimeter is set to feet and also to kilometers. I can make some notes um, on this particular uh, polygon as well. And we can go ahead and print uh, Charla from this uh, menu as well. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Um, there was one other, couple of other things here. Um, when we talk about edge information, um, we're talking about that specific edge. Uh, again, the distance between two points. Uh, and it will give us um, some information. Uh, sometimes folks are looking for very specific technical information, depending on how you're using Terrain Navigator Pro for, for what purposes. Um, but this will give you information like the uh, feet and meters, uh, the longitude, the latitude, and so forth. One of the things to mention is the longitude and lat latitude is what's available here uh, on the screen. Uh, John Taylor has a question. Does it print the screen or does it print uh, just the polygon? So if we, if we go ahead and click print, um, that will um, print the, um, and if you have a, an answer to that, does it print screen or polygon? In all of the information windows, the print button prints the information that's shown in that uh, window. It's not, uh, it's not for printing maps or anything of that nature, just simply to give you access to the uh, information that's in that screen in a printed form. And of course, you can print it to a PDF file and things of that nature uh, if that's set up to do so on your computer. Um, thank you. Any other qu questions before I continue? No, it looks like uh, we're good here. Now, one of the things uh, we can do here is um, insert a vertex. Let's say we wanted to add another vertex in between. We could do that here. Um, and we could, uh, you know, go ahead and say, okay, you know, let's, let's put that vertex here. Um, let me go back to polygon. Uh, one of the things that you can do again from this menu is create the track of the route. You can get the information, you can hide it, you can lock it. Uh, you can delete the entire polygon. You can drag the polygon. This is kind of a cool feature. If I drag the polygon, it moves it. Let's say you've got a, another track that's pretty identical, uh, you know, in, in uh, you know, features or whatever. Uh, you can go ahead and say, okay, I want to move it uh, to this location. So um, that's pretty handy. You can drag a polygon which that's kind of uh, cool information to know. Um, let's go ahead and you can copy it to the clipboard. Let's say, for example, um, you want this, but you want to keep the original one. You don't want to drag it. Uh, but what you can do is go ahead, copy to the clipboard, and uh, you can go ahead and uh, uh, paste um, that. And um, Ed, how do you get that pasted? So we've gone ahead, we have um, copied it to the clipboard, and what we'll do is under uh, the tools menu, uh, we'll go to paste call polygon, um, and, and um, I can move this one because I pasted it to the same location, uh, but you can go ahead and easily duplicate, duplicate it as well. Um, let's go ahead and just a couple more things. We're almost done here. You can send it to the GPS um, as we talked about. Last thing that I think is of significance, again, for technical information on polygons, uh, you can get the profile information. Uh, and again, um, let's say uh, you've got it's uh, plotted on uh, X and Y feet. Uh, over feet, and you can get information such as the uh, elevation change, you can get uh, the latitude, longitude, you can get uh, the grade 
uh, for some of our technical folks, that's very handy information to have. It will give you uh, the total distance and the ground. From this menu, if I click here and I say, okay, I want to go to like this location on the map. Again, I took the, uh, uh, the cross that's under a profile and I can specify a specific area uh, to go to and what you'll see, let me move this, um, is that it will move to that location on the map. So uh, pretty uh, good to know about that. Uh, just a couple of other things here. Again, we can print this. Um, we can also export this. Let's say we did want to export it. We could export it as a JPEG or as a TIFF and give it a file name. Uh, you know, uh, test uh, polygon. And we can save that uh, to a location. I can click Save. So again, very technical, uh, useful information on our uh, uh, Polygon tool. I'm going to go ahead. Are there uh, any questions on what I've just demonstrated here? Uh, if not, uh, let me just go ahead. I'm going to zoom out just a bit. And uh, bear with me for just a second here. Oops, too much. All right, let me go ahead and grab the hand. Uh, and let's go ahead and go here. One of the things that I do want to do is let's take, uh, for example, this polygon. And what I want to do is create a track of this one. And I'm going to call this small polygon for this particular track. I'm going to click OK. And what we're going to do now is take a look at uh, this on our two things. We're going to look at it um, on our mobile app and also on our web portal. So what we'll do here is I'm going to log in to the web portal. So we can go to terrainnavigator.com. Uh, I'm already logged in. Uh, and what I'm going to do is go to my projects. And it will come up with a uh, list of our projects. And uh, the, let's go to uh, the last page here. Um, that is today, Polygon Tool Webinar. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You'll see our two polygons here. This is a great way if you just, again, have access to the internet. Maybe you're at a, a coffee shop and you have Wi-Fi and uh, you want to go over your polygon. but uh, this is one way is to log into your web portal. What you would do is activate your project. So you would click on the tools. Again, we did a whole video on the TMP mobile app that you can find on the YouTube channel. Uh, you know, you can change all kinds of things here. You can uh, change it to an aerial uh, and, you know, you've got a very nice looking map. Do have a question here, Ed? I do need your assistance with. Um, there's a question from Carl Joyce. All elevation data, is it original surface? The el elevation data used throughout Terrain Navigator Pro is a digital elevation model um, that uh, was uh, computed by the USGS a number of years ago. Um, it is an approximate elevation of the surface at that particular location. Um, Terrain Navigator Pro does not currently have any facility uh, built into it for uh, elevations that are, are collected on site or entered from another party. So uh, that's the, the source of all the elevations within Terrain Navigator Pro. That includes the um, that includes uh, use in the 3D modeling uh, and the profile and uh, all of those sorts of displays. Um, Carl, are you good with that? Is there a follow up to Ed's um, statement on the um on the elevation model. So I guess uh, Carl is all set. If you do have that question, Carl, just type that in. Gary, uh, uh, you had a question about how to uh, how I got to the web portal is very easy. Um, what we'll do is we'll pull up a um, we'll pull up a web browser. We'll go to terrainnavigator.com. Um, and this is what it would look like, Gary, for you. What you would do is click on login. Uh, you would enter your credentials, click the login link, and then click on projects. 
and then you would locate your project in your list of projects. Uh, the Polygon tool is the one that we're looking at here, uh, and that's how we brought that up. Um, and another question for you, uh, Joel <laughs> uh, would like to know, are you aware of any GPSs that are available to sync tracks from the TMP mobile to the GPS via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? Any GPS? So, uh, Joel, could you please clarify uh, that you mean a handheld GPS like a Garmin? Uh, that you want to uh, synchronize with uh, your uh, with a mobile app, uh, such as an iPhone or an Android device. Okay, uh, no, I'm not aware of any uh, Garmin units or handheld units like that that connect via Bluetooth. Um, haven't uh, haven't encountered anything like that. Excellent questions. You guys are uh, really uh, getting to the meat of some of uh, the capabilities for Terrain Navigator Pro. Um, Okay, if you have those questions, keep putting them up there. Um, we did talk about the yeah, web portal again. Um, we did do a uh, touch on the web portal. Uh, for those of you that you know want to learn more, uh, that's on the YouTube channel. Um, we're almost done here. We're, I'm just going to demonstrate this on our... Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to show the uh, TNP on the web. Excuse me, on the TNP mobile. So bear with me for uh, just a second. One of the things here is I'm going to bring my mobile screen over so that everybody can view that. Now let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to get into my uh, TNP here. Uh, just a second. What we'll do is go to Terrain Navigator Pro Mobile. And what we're going to do is go to um, all my projects because we cr I created a new project. You'll see that it comes up at first in the list. So it's a Polygon tool webinar project. So uh, it has uh, downloaded this. I'm gonna, you'll see, we do have our two tracks here, the small Polygon and John's tract of land. Let's go ahead and activate that. And projects have been synced. And what you'll see, uh, is uh, Terrain Navigator Pro, you'll see our two tracks of land uh, on the mobile app. So, um, so basically, this uh, uh, demonstrates uh, the features of the Polygon tool. If you do have any questions with that, you can also always contact me. Uh, I believe that you have my contact information at the bottom of the, uh, I sent you an email that we received. Your um, uh, invitation and um, I have a question from a, from the floor uh, that uh, uh, somebody asked me to clarify which is uh, a sharing of projects and uh, that sort of thing um, when you have uh, train navigator pro deployed across your organization you can create a project that is uh, shared across um, members of your team uh, you can define on the web portal the members of your team for each individual users and then uh, in doing so, when you create a project, you can uh, then, in fact, uh, use those project. Uh, you know, one person can be editing it uh, and another person can be editing it basically simultaneously uh, so that uh, changes can be uh, brought to everyone on the team. Um, and uh, I believe there's another webinar that covers some of that um, um, uh, separately, but it was asked to clarify that uh, you can, uh, in fact, do that. Um, and that is a little separate from team tracking, which is uh, showing positions of different people at the same time. Uh, that's not project uh, dependent, but uh, in, in fact, uh, you can uh, allow more than one person to, um, to uh, see these polygons or any element of your project, uh, well, specifically markers, routes, and tracks at the same time. Thank you, Ed. Thanks for that uh, for that uh, question. Um, so, do we have any other questions? Um, can you guys just put in the chat here? Are you finding that these uh, TMP training webinars are helpful? Just uh, if if they are helpful, if you could just uh, you know in the chat say you know that uh, you know that you are finding these informative, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, if there are no other questions, uh, then, um, you know, then, uh, that kind of will conclude today's, uh, webinar. 
please know that you can always uh, reach me um, if you have any questions or if there's, let's say there's some one-on-one -on -one training that you need, uh, just contact me and uh, we can get that scheduled, um, especially for your organization. Uh, if there's a specific training that you want it, you, just for your group, um, you know, just let us know. So um, I've got a bunch of folks. Thank you for all those that took the time to say that uh, these webinars are helpful. Um, really appreciate that. Uh, uh, you guys have been um, fantastic. Um, and uh, well, fantastic. Well, I appreciate that. I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you for next month's webinar. Um, that will be at uh, the end of February on the last uh, Wednesday of February. So take care and have a great day.